G'day everyone, welcome to this update for Global Markets for the 10th of October and uh, what an extraordinary rebound we saw last week in uh, not only in the US but basically around the world. Uh, this, the speed and strength of it was, uh, was quite breathtaking. So the question is, uh, is that it for the correction? Um, are we going down again? Uh, look, I, I think it certainly swayed uh, the odds very much in the the favour of the correction perhaps being complete, uh, but markets have run uh, very hard in a very short space of time, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of a pullback. But uh, let's have a look at uh, what uh, the action was last week. Um, <clears throat> the S&P ended up 7% higher on the week, absolutely huge. There was a big intraday turnaround the previous Friday, and that followed through uh, in, in unbelievable strength during the week. So uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of very positive signs around the US market. Uh, and it's not just the index, uh, the breadth is improving. There are uh, a sharply higher number of stocks trading above their 50 day moving average. <clears throat> there's also a sharply higher percentage of stocks trading above their 200 day moving average. So that really has turned around in quite dramatic fashion. Adding to that, emerging markets, China, Russia, Brazil, um, and, their, and their currencies are also looking much better. And if you think back a couple of months, it was really the, the crunch in the emerging stock markets and the, in the emerging market currencies that really started the whole um, route that ended up in that, uh, that flash crash on the 25th of August. So the fact that emerging markets are responding as strongly as they are uh, is also a very positive sign. Now, uh, completing the, the trio of, of major indicators is the fact that the, there was resistance at 2,000 points and the index went straight through that without stopping and managed to hold three more sessions above that level. So uh, a lot of positives. However, uh, just towards the end of the week, I just got the, the, um, uh, the impression that the, the buyers were getting exhausted. We had a bit of a doji candle on Friday, which is indicating that the balance between buyers and sellers had come back into, into line. And uh, so we, we may just see a bit of a short-term pullback. So let's take a look at those charts. So we'll start with the daily chart on the S&P. So you can see we had, uh, well, let me just back, back up one. So what we do have, however, which indicates something we haven't seen for quite a long period of time, you've got to go back to 2011, is to see the, the red line, the 150 day moving average actually rolling over and the index being below it. Now, that was the case from the 2nd of August until the 20th of December in 2011. This, this is shaping up as quite a similar pattern, so we may not be quite out of the woods yet, uh, but definitely the, the really strong bull run of the last four years has changed character, at least temporarily. Now we got this very, very sharp sell-off. We got a rebound, formed a wedge. We broke the wedge to the downside, um, formed a double bottom. And from there, this quite extraordinary rebound. Broken above the 2000 point level. Still needs to get above this intraday high, which was the, the day of the Fed announcement on the 17th of uh, September. Um, and as you can see, a yeah, bit of indecision certainly on Friday. So we might get a bit of a pullback, uh, you know, could pull back to the, the 1963 level. So how this pulls back will tell us a lot about the run into the end of the year. So the jury's still out a little bit, but certainly looking a lot more positive than it was. Let's look at the monthly chart. And you can see here we had weakness, but closed off its lows. This is 2011. Weakness, but closed off its lows in August. Down in September. And then a big rebound in October. And at the moment, now we're only 10 days into October, but you can see it's a very, very similar pattern. So um, that's the way things are sitting in the American market at the moment. Uh, now the Aussie dollar has strengthened. Uh, the US dollar has, has been falling. Uh, so the Aussie dollar has gone up. Um, that has caused uh, the US dollar falling, of course, caused uh, some commodity prices. 
to uh, to rise, and that has also helped the Australian dollar. But um, as as I wrote to members uh, in the um, in the main uh, weekend written alert, um, all the indicators are that the, the the drivers of the Australian dollar would suggest that it's uh, this is just a temporary rally and it's heading back down. So 75 looks possible, but then I believe the, the strong odds are we'll be back below 70 cents by year end. Now the ASX 200 index had a huge week, up 228 points for the week. And uh, we've been looking at a downtrending channel since March, April. Uh, that has now broken. So things looking better in the Australian market as well. Let's look first of all at the currency. So we'll have some resistance up here around 75 uh, and where we closed the week at 73.3. Uh, so a bit of a jump. So it's jumped about, uh, it's jumped nearly four cents from uh, about 10 days ago. Um, but I wouldn't expect it to run too much further from here. Turning now to the ASX 200, you can see this big downtrending channel that started in April. Uh, we then formed a, a wedge, a falling wedge within that pattern. We then got a break of that wedge. Uh, we covered all this last week. Uh, that was the 29th of September. And I raised the question whether that was a false break or whether that was the first indication that we were heading lower still. As it's turned out, it's been a false break. We broke above the wedge on Monday and we broke above the channel on Friday. So pretty strong the Australian market. Turning out of commodities, gold was higher by $19 on the week. Uh, but look, I read this as currency impact only. The, uh, the US dollar is falling, gold has gone up, $19 is not much. So I don't think it's, I don't think gold is coming in for any additional support. It's just the relationship with the US dollar. And I do expect to see the US dollar regain strength so um, I'm not excited by gold at all. Stocks are looking a little bit better now. Stocks have been lagging for the last few weeks. So gold stocks looking a little bit better. They are leading, but they're still not broken out of their base. So again, I'm still not really enticed into the gold market. This is gold on a daily basis. So you can see we're still really just in a, in a big consolidation pattern here. There's gold on the weekly, gives you a, a wider perspective. So really nothing nothing has changed there. And if we look at the HUI, which is one of the gold stock indices you could look at, uh, yes, we had a strong week in gold stocks, but the moving average is still heading down. The value is still well below the moving average. We haven't broken out of this base yet, um, and we're getting close to being overbought. So really no confirmation uh, on the gold front as yet. Copper was higher to 240, up from about 232 last week. But again, that's just currency. Um, I don't think copper is you know, suddenly coming in for an increase in demand. Uh, crude oil, uh, also mostly currency related. Um, but we've got resistance at $50. So it really needs to break above 50 to show some additional strength. And there's absolutely no fundamental reason why that would happen. Um, we've still got a lot more supply than, than we've got demand. This is the copper chart, bit of a recovery, but still forming a base between 225 and, and roughly $2.45. So overall to wrap it up, um, the strategic approach, the, the correction, uh, may be complete. I think that's it's looking more to me like it's maybe 70% complete. Um, earnings season, which is coming up in America, it started on Thursday with Alcoa, uh, and it will run for uh, the next uh, four to five weeks for most of the stocks. Um, the main stocks that I follow will be reporting between uh, towards the end of uh, October, so around the 25th, 26th, through to about the 10th of November. That, now, a, there's a lot of negativity being priced into uh, into US stocks, um, particularly in some of the higher beta sectors. So I think that um, we, you know whatever negative connotation can be put on things is is being put on it. 
And the rebound in the S&P index has been a lot in uh, the defensive stocks. So utilities, consumer staples, consumer discretionary stocks. It has not been an across the board uh, rise in, um, uh, in, you know, in American stocks. Yes, the breadth is improving, but there are still some sectors that are that are lagging. Now, I believe the signs are that the earnings season will um, help analysts adjust their view that they're being just far too pessimistic. So um, I think that will help finalise the uncertainty and, and probably get uh, those sectors back on track as well. So I've been talking about this W bottom looks to be in place. Um, that's what we looked at with the S&P. So just to recap what a, what a W bottom means for anyone that isn't clear on that. So here's our W. There's the first part. There's the second jump up. There's the, the second formation of the, the W. And now we've completed that W pattern uh, altogether. So the, the balance of probabilities are that this, this um, correction is complete. We've got strong value. We've got we've got outstanding value in several sectors, and I and I still continue to shake my head that there is this media commentary about how overvalued the American market is. It's just it's just not true. It's not a fact. When you look at the um, the price earnings multiples, they're at levels way below what they've been running at for the last few years, and they're below the long run averages for the market. And they are also well below the earnings growth rate. Uh, now, yes, there's a few stocks that are overvalued, um, but it's a relatively small percentage. And, and it's just those stocks that are being seized upon for, on, for the people that you know want to make the case that the American market should fall. There's a lot of bearish commentators out there that are all falling over themselves trying to tell you, you know, who can who can paint the the blackest, grimmest picture. And, you know, I'm afraid that their view of the world just is not supported by the facts. So the American market is uh, is not overvalued in my view, and there's some terrific value in, in a lot of sectors. If you don't know how to find those, and if you don't know how to play them, then that's what I do for members. So there's my contact details there for anyone that would like uh, to talk to me and have some, um, perhaps some more guidance on how to make the most out of this market. I think it's poised um, now for uh, a good run into the year end, and there's um, there's some terrific uh, value and opportunities after this big sell-off. So that's the rundown for this week. Um, I I do expect a bit of a short-term pullback next week, but the nature of that will tell us a lot about the next few months. That's it for this week. Cheers.